Welcome back to Fictional History 101. I'm your professor of fictional history, Professor Johnson. Today, we're continuing our lecture on the Metal Gear series. In our last class, we went over the creation and separation of the philosophers and the events of Metal Gear Solid 3, chief among them, Operation Snake Eater. In this class, we'll be covering the events immediately after Operation Snake Eater, which include information from Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, and Metal Gear Solid 4. With how self-referential a lot of Metal Gear is, from here on I'd say it's fair to assume that every lecture will touch on a little bit of just about every other Metal Gear game. Big Boss had rejected his title and government following Operation Snake Eater, and left the United States for six years. Meanwhile, David O, or Major Zero, gained control of a portion of the Philosopher's Legacy, and planned to form a secret group to create the boss's ideal world. The years after Operation Snake Eater would see a rise in tension between the Eastern and Western blocs. In 1964, the U.S. began backing guerrillas seeking to overthrow communist governments and leaders in Central and Southern America, often under the guidance of the CIA. One such operative that worked in the region was the former CIA director, Hot Coldman. Coldman was demoted following Operation Snake Eater. In his words, it was to ensure people in the know kept their mouths shut, or else pack them off somewhere where there's no one to listen. Although he had engineered Operation Snake Eater, and had been lauded for its success, he would find himself forced to relocate to South America. He was assigned to fight against communist influence in the area. Embittered by the force change, he began to formulate the Peace Walker Project as his key to return to the United States. The Cold War was dominated by the idea of deterrence through mutually assured destruction, the belief that one side wouldn't attack the other as the nuclear retaliation would destroy both of them. However, Hot Coldman believed that there was a flaw in this, the humans in charge of the retaliation. He believed that humans would not want to see the entire world destroyed in a nuclear war and may not issue a retaliation order, leaving a nuclear first strike as a possible option for the other side. He wanted to remove this possibility. Using the stolen Metal Gear designs, he planned for an autonomous fail-deadly nuclear launch system, which could launch retaliatory strikes without any human input. This system would be comprised of large, nuclear missile-equipped walking drones. These drones would hide in the jungles of South America, nearly impossible to detect, and would automatically launch a nuclear retaliatory strike if they detected an attack. While Hot Coldman worked on his Peace Walker project, the Cold War continued on. In 1967, there was the Six Day War and War of Attrition between the Western-backed Israel and Communist-backed Egypt. The following year would see the introduction of the Brezhnev Doctrine within the Soviet Union. This stated that the Soviet Union would do whatever it took to protect communist countries from the Western powers, including military intervention if needed. As the Cold War continued, Big Boss finally decided to return to the United States. In 1970, he worked together with David O to form Foxhound. This would be a successor to the Cobra unit, focused on training highly skilled operatives and equipping them with the latest technology. But this wasn't the only group the two would found. The two would form another group known as the Patriots. Their founding members included a number of people involved in Operation Snake Eater. Major Ocelot, also known as Adamska, Donald Anderson, the technical specialist on the mission, Dr. Clark, the medical specialist, and even Eva. The group was focused on creating the ideal world the boss had envisioned, a world without borders and senseless conflict. They planned to use the Philosopher's Legacy to control the world, just the same way that the Philosophers had planned to. As part of this, David O, now going by the name of Zero, planned to make Big Boss a figurehead. He wanted Big Boss to be a larger-than-life figure, someone who could be rallied behind by everyone, rich or poor, communist or capitalist, soldier or civilian. Zero spread exaggerated stories of Big Boss's triumphs and missions, turning him into a semi-mythical figure. However, Big Boss didn't like this, and this served as the beginning of the division between Zero and Big Boss. Zero planned to use the Patriots to control the world, 
believing that if the entire world was under one unified will, there would be no more conflict. However, Big Boss disagreed with this shadowy tyranny and simply wanted a world where soldiers weren't used as tools by their governments and discarded carelessly. With Division growing in their ranks, Zero began to worry that Big Boss would abandon the group. To this end, he began a new plan, Les Enfants Terribles. In 1972, Dr. Clark used Big Boss's DNA to create clones of him, with Eva serving as the surrogate mother, so that the group would always have their legendary figureheads. At first, two clones were created, Solid and Liquid Snake. Each was modified genetically to embody either the dominant or recessive genes of Big Boss. A third clone of Big Boss was created later, codenamed Solidus Snake. However, he would go by the name George Sears. Unlike Liquid and Solid Snake, Solidus was a true copy of Big Boss. Disgusted by this cloning project, Big Boss left the Patriots and Foxhound for a final time. Along with him, Ocelot also found himself disagreeing with this new direction, although he stayed with the Patriots for the time being. Big Boss would travel to Vietnam, joining a long-range reconnaissance patrol, as well as working with the Studies and Observation Group, the Green Berets, and the Wild Geese. Zero grew bitter as Big Boss left the group, and began planning his revenge. He recruited a young girl named Pacifica Ocean, who he planned to turn into the instrument of his revenge. He trained her as an operative, planning to use her to get close to Big Boss. She was also to facilitate the meeting between Hot Coldman and his soon-to-be KGB ally. While Zero planned for Big Boss's downfall, Hot Coldman was working on his Peace Walker project. In 1972, through Pacifica Ocean, he formed an alliance with KGB agent Vladimir Zadornov, obtaining equipment and additional manpower in exchange for land and money. Coldman was under pressure from the SALT negotiations happening at the time. SALT was the shortened name for the Strategic Arms Limitation Talks Agreement, which planned to limit the amount of strategic nuclear weapons. Coldman believed this was a step in the wrong direction, and that the U.S. needed to escalate its nuclear program to provide true deterrence. While Coldman wanted Zadornov's resources to complete his project, Zadornov wanted Peace Walker. He planned to steal Peace Walker once it was completed, and use it to launch a nuclear attack on Cuba, giving rise to a new wave of anti-U.S. sentiment in Central and Southern America. Late in 1972, the Colombian government would hire Big Boss to work with their army in fighting a guerrilla uprising. During this uprising, Big Boss would meet his future second-in-command, Kazuhira Miller. After defeating the guerrillas, Big Boss established a mercenary group named Militares Sans Frontieras, or Soldiers Without Borders. We'll refer to them as MSF for short. Miller was brought on as his second-in-command. Less than a year later, the CIA sponsored a coup in Chile, overthrowing the socialist president Salvador Allende and installing Pinochet instead. Pinochet would go on to kill and or detain his political opponents once installed. At the same time, Coldman began his move into Costa Rica. His Peace Sentinel group entered Costa Rica disguised as a private military company and began fighting with local communist-backed guerrillas. They established bases within the country and began developing the Peace Walker prototypes. Dr. Huey Emmerich and Dr. Strangelove were recruited to develop the Peace Walker project at the Mount Irazu facility. Coldman had convinced Emmerich to join by sharing the Metal Gear designs with him and promising to end the use of nuclear weapons. Strangelove had her own reasons for joining. She claimed that she wanted to bring the boss back to life. She believed that AI could serve as a means of resurrecting her and use the Peace Walker project to gather as much information on her as possible. She claimed the boss would be the most perfect fit for a nuclear AI, as she was seen as a completely logical individual. However, her true goal was to gather enough information to clear the boss's name after she had been labeled a traitor to her country. With Peace Walker nearing completion, the KGB operative in charge of influencing Costa Rica reached out to MSF. Zadornov, going by the alias Roman Galvez Mena, approached Big Boss, hoping to hire his mercenaries to fight against Coldman's forces. As Costa Rica didn't have a military of their own, he needed an outside force to combat them. His stated reason was that Coldman's group was planning on overthrowing the government, 
just as had happened the previous year in Chile. At first, Big Boss refused, even ignoring the claims of torture by the disguised Pacifica Ocean, now going by the alias Paz Ortega, as he figured out that Galvez was a KGB agent. Big Boss didn't want MSF to make an enemy of the United States. However, he changed his mind when Galvez presented him with a recording. It was the voice of the boss, singing a song that had come out recently. He agreed to the mission, hoping to see his former mentor again. Big Boss was given the use of an offshore plant to use as a base for MSF. Big Boss quickly began investigating Coldman's forces. He found the CIA was bringing nuclear weapons into Costa Rica, in spite of the Tlati Logo Treaty, which forbid Costa Rica from the use, storage, or transport of nuclear weapons. MSF met with the local Sandinista guerrillas, who further echoed the belief that the CIA was in the country to overthrow the government. MSF worked with the rebels in engaging the Peace Sentinel forces, which included many unmanned drones. Big Boss and MSF pursued the nuclear weapons the Peace Sentinel was transporting. During this pursuit, Big Boss overheard a discussion between Emmerich and Hot Coldman. Coldman planned to launch a nuclear weapon using Peace Walker to demonstrate its effectiveness. When the wheelchair-bound Emmerich protested, he was shoved down a stairway. While Coldman left him behind, Big Boss would find the injured scientist and convince him to join MSF. Once back at base, Emmerich would begin plans for MSF to develop their own nuclear deterrent, Metal Gear Zeke. Big Boss continued on the trail of Peace Sentinel, infiltrating the facility they were developing their AI in. He would discover both Dr. Strangelove, as well as the boss's AI program. Big Boss tried to destroy the pod containing the boss's AI, but was unable to do so before the emotional strain of hearing the boss speak to him caused him to pass out. While he was passed out, Dr. Strangelove took Big Boss outside the facility and moved the AI weapons away. Pursuing Peace Sentinel, Big Boss would catch up to them at another base. He found more of the AI weapons and defeated them before gaining entry to the base. However, he was ambushed by Hot Coldman, Dr. Strangelove, and several soldiers. Subdued and taken into custody, Dr. Strangelove tortured and interrogated Big Boss for information on Operation Snake Eater and the boss. Big Boss refused to give up any information, passing out rather than divulging anything. Placed in confinement afterwards, Big Boss would escape finding Paws had been captured as well, and was being held hostage by Coldman. Coldman planned to begin the Peace Walker test soon. It was scheduled to move along the Caribbean coast on its own, going through communist and guerrilla territory, before firing its nuclear weapon at MSF's base off the coast of Costa Rica. This would serve two goals. One, it would be a demonstration of its nuclear capabilities, and two, the fallout would kill fish and crops in the area, leaving the local populace with only work on Peace Walker's mass production as a means of survival. MSF chased after Peace Walker, but it was able to escape to a U.S. military supply base on the southeastern shore of Lago Coquibolca. It was set to launch on November 23rd, at the same time as the U.S.-Soviet SALT-2 talk in Vladivostok. MSF attacked the base, planning to take control of the communications tower to stop the final launch order from being sent to Peace Walker. Big Boss managed to breach the tower, but found Coldman holding Paws hostage inside. As Peace Walker was meant only for retaliation and not a first strike, Coldman had planned to transmit data showing a fake Soviet attack on the US mainland in order to trick Peace Walker into firing back. However, Zadornov entered the communications tower as well, revealing his part in the Peace Walker plot. Zadornov non-fatally shot Coldman, and planned to kill Big Boss as well in order to further bolster anti-US feelings, as he had made a name for himself among the rebels. MSF and the guerrillas stormed the building, and took out the Soviet forces, and arrested Zadornov as well. In the confusion, Coldman was able to activate Peace Walker, and send the false nuclear attack data directly to NORAD. He hoped this would be the example of an unthinking AI being able to retaliate without hesitation. With the President and Vice President at the SALT-2 talks, the Speaker of the House had launch authority and set the nation to DEFCON 3. The Joint Chiefs of Staff planned to go through with a retaliatory strike against the Soviet Union. While Big Boss was able to contact the Chairman and inform him of Coldman's plot, he wasn't able to de-escalate the situation. Other members of the Joint Chiefs took the Chairman at gunpoint and planned to retaliate anyway. 
the only way to stop the launch now would be to destroy Peace Walker and stop the false information from being transmitted. Big Boss was unable to damage Peace Walker enough to destroy it. However, during the battle, the AI pod opened on its own, allowing Big Boss inside. He entered the AI pod and began removing its components, forcing the AI to malfunction. Although Peace Walker was still transmitting the data, it began to move on its own. The boss's AI reasserted itself and took control of Peace Walker. Playing the Carpenter's Sing, Peace Walker began walking into a nearby lake to drown itself to stop the data transfer. The fake nuclear missiles on NORAD's displays disappeared, replaced instead with peace signs. Having rescued Paws from Coldman, Big Boss took her into MSF, allowing her to stay at Mother Base. He also brought on Dr. Strangelove so she and Emmerich could help design their Metal Gear prototype. They planned to have the nuclear-equipped Zeke serve as a deterrent for other nations who might object to MSF's status as a mercenary nation. With Operation Peace Walker stopped, Big Boss let his guard down, and Paz began her mission of revenge against him. Working with Zadornov, Paz released the KGB agent from his confinement multiple times, and in the confusion, reprogrammed the prototype Zeke and modified it to accommodate a pilot. While Big Boss would be forced to kill Zadornov in self-defense, Paz would steal the Zeke unit. She revealed that she was taking Zeke to the Patriots, and that she'd been sent by Zero, who was now going by the name of Cypher. Paz offered Big Boss a final chance to rejoin Cypher, who wanted MSF to act as a military guard against anyone trying to stop him. When Big Boss declined, she planned to launch Zeke's nuclear weapon at the U.S. East Coast and blame it on MSF. However, Big Boss was able to stop her, and nearly destroyed Zeke. While Zeke was salvaged, Paz would go missing, and would later be captured by XOF. She was taken to Camp Omega in Cuba for interrogation. After the events of Peace Walker, Big Boss and Kazuhira Miller saw their rising influence and status among other nations, especially the two superpowers of the time. They knew that others wouldn't take well to their growing power, and might try to act against them. Big Boss formed MSF into an organization that stood apart from other governments. In a speech to the members of MSF, he declared their base, Outer Heaven. Big Boss and MSF had established themselves as a power apart from other nations. They had publicly stood up to the CIA and KGB, while also secretly standing against Cypher and his designs for control over the world from the shadows. Although the Cold War was set to die down, Cypher's plans for the world were only growing, and standing in their way was this lone mercenary company. It would be a dangerous time for Big Boss and MSF, and in only a few years, they would face the consequences of their actions. I think this is a good place for us to wrap up. This is really the first time we would see a Metal Gear unit in the Metal Gear timeline. The Shago HUD before it, although it had the nuclear weapons, didn't really have the same large mechanical legs that future units would have. Peace Walker was very much a proof of concept for future Metal Gear designs, which we would see refined into the bipedal Z. And from there, future Metal Gear designs would only follow. In our next class, we'll go into the events following Operation Peace Walker, which will mostly cover Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain, and Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes. Thank you for joining our class today. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact us by email at fictionalhistory101 at gmail.com or tweet at us at fichist101. Also, I'd like to take the chance to mention our Patreon page. It's only recently been put up, but if you've enjoyed these lectures, please feel free to contribute however much you're able. Even a dollar per lecture helps me cover the cost of producing these and can hopefully let me focus on this more in the future. Thank you again for joining us in class and please don't forget to study.
The intro and outro music for this class is Labyrinth by Enrico Altavia, courtesy of freesoundtrackmusic.com. <laughs>